thank you uh, very much and welcome to the BizHack Live Digital Marketing Masterclass Series. I'm Dan Gretsch, CEO and founder of BizHack Academy, and it's wonderful to be here today. Uh, wonderful to kick off our three-part masterclass series in partnership uh, with the office of the mayor, Daniela Levine Cava, as well as the Miami-Dade County Strive 305 effort. Today, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn and how to leverage LinkedIn to grow your business. And whether you realize it or not, you are actually registered for next week's session automatically, how to conduct your own digital market, uh, marketing audit, and the week after that, tips to make your Instagram pop. Uh, this is a three-part series uh, in partnership with uh, the mayor's office, Daniela Levine Cava. Uh, we're so thrilled to be a part of this. And Strive 305 uh, is an effort uh, that they've undertaken to try to help empower businesses across Miami-Dade County. Danilo Vargas, who is our partner in this, uh, will be joining us a little later. And if there's some time at the end, uh, I'd love for him to share a little bit more about the Strive 305 effort. So this is me. Uh, I'm Dan Gretsch. I'm a business storyteller. Uh, I really focus on helping businesses and brands uh, tell their business story to create relationships and generate uh, leads and sales. And it's an incredible honor uh, to be doing this work. Uh, I spent 20 years as a journalist uh, at some of the top news organizations in South Florida, Miami Herald, WLRN, uh, I've also worked for some of the largest companies in South Florida, uh, a billion dollar energy startup, uh, an energy company, a B2B software startup. And uh, we've won some great recognition, including top startup of the year back in 2019 by the Miami Herald. I'm also a graduate uh, of Miami's Goldman Sachs 10KSB program. Um, and uh, BizHack has partnered with a lot of the top business support organizations across the county, including the SBDC, uh, the Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council, as well as our top universities, FIU, Broward College, Miami Dade College, and we won a lot of accolades for that work, including for a series uh, that we ran last year uh, over the last 18 months called BizHack Live. And this is really the continuation of the BizHack Live uh, series. We did 60 webinars for COVID impacted businesses um, and this is kind of the jumpstart and the restart of the 2.0 of BizHack Live. And we're so excited to be doing this in partnership with uh, the mayor's office. We were recognized by American Marketing Association and Reagan's PR Daily as cause marketer of the year. Uh, very excited about that and very honored uh, to be doing this kind of work for you and for your small businesses. I wanted to um, welcome now Cheryl Cattell. Um, Cheryl is one of BizHack's top lead instructors. She's the creator of our LinkedIn Business Edge course. And more importantly, uh, she's a dear friend and supporter and 35-year marketer and helper of businesses across uh, Miami-Dade County for decades. And so uh, it's my distinct honor to welcome Cheryl Cattell, who's going to be talking to us today about LinkedIn. Thank you, Dan. Can you hear me okay? All right, great. So Thanks, um, and I am really pleased to be associated with BizHack. Uh, I love the work you're doing, Dan. Uh, it's what drew me to this. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm going to first of all say um, that if anyone tells you they're a LinkedIn expert, they're not telling the truth because LinkedIn is changing so quickly. I think it's difficult for anybody to be an expert. I was looking at some uh, guides and tip sheets that just came out, and I found inaccuracies and things that had changed. So I'm just going to tell you, I know a lot about LinkedIn. I pay attention to LinkedIn, and I'm going to share with you some of that knowledge today. So I just want to make that really clear. Um, so yes, I've um, in my background, I've won a few awards. I've had some great titles, VP, CMOs, worked with brands like Travelocity, Mary Kay, Bank of America. Um, I founded two internet uh, or interactive marketing associations, one in Dallas, one here in South Florida. I'm currently an adjunct instructor at FAU, and I did course design for the University of San Francisco, their digital marketing certificate. I also taught uh, at the UVA McIntyre School of Business. I worked overseas, so for our friends in um, Italy, I have worked, I worked and lived in Belgium for four years, and I think that was like 
like the the peak of my career, corporate career for sure. Um, during COVID, I founded a life coaching uh, company. Uh, I'm an author and a speaker, uh, and uh, the name of the company is now All Maya. And uh, as Dan mentioned, I am the course creator, lead instructor for the LinkedIn Business Edge. So, all right. So we're going to start off with a poll so I can get an idea of what, you know, uh, kind of the level of engagement that the group has right now. So Lilia, if you could launch there, I see it. Great. Thank you. Um, if you wouldn't mind just sharing with us, um, you know, what are you doing on LinkedIn right now? Um, while we're waiting for the uh, results to come in, I want to mention that um, polls are one of the most effective ways to get engagement on LinkedIn. I put the same poll here and don't be, do not be uh, intimidated by the fact that I have a bunch of overachieving friends who post every day on LinkedIn. This is definitely not the norm, but I wanted to show you a couple of other great uses of the poll feature on LinkedIn. And um, as you can see here, you know, you can just make really quick posts and get engagement with your audience. And this one had 32,000 votes. Um, here's another one. Should toxic people get, be given a second chance? Um, these are great, great ways to um, get engagement. Okay, Lilia, we're over 80%. Let's go ahead and share. All right. So we have um, a, a, some people that I, I think a, free, a few times a week is very, very admirable. About 20%. Once a month, um, it's difficult to have a relationship if you only see somebody once a month. So I want you to think about LinkedIn as building relationships. And so you can have a relationship. It's just going to take a long time to build trust. So um, for the nevers and once in a blue moon, hopefully today you'll leave and you'll be convinced that um, this is, you're, you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to make some effort to, to start sharing. So, all right. Now let's just jump right in. You know, so you say, well, why? Who cares? Um, I want to say this about LinkedIn. Um, it is not your mother's LinkedIn. It has changed dramatically. And if you're smart enough to jump on this now, you're going to be in on the ground floor as LinkedIn, since they've been purchased by Microsoft, is starting to morph and becoming a real business engagement tool. It's no longer about just finding jobs. It used to be. That's what you did. It was just a big resume pool. And that's not the case, not at all. Uh, and you'll see what 740 million people, uh, not all of them are looking for jobs. Uh, about right now, the statistics that were from last year's research, 50% of all social media traffic, that's all these guys over here, Twitter, Facebook, and all others for B2B is coming from LinkedIn. But this is the more important number. Only 50% of the traffic, but 80% of social media leads. And that's what you need to pay attention to. So it's quality, not just quantity. We also see a very high number of influencers, people with senior level titles. And I love this stat. It kind of blows your mind. So I'm going to count one. Two people just joined LinkedIn. Every second, two people are joining. And so that's what you want to start getting in on, have your presence there. And this is another huge opportunity. Um, three million people, only three million, you know, the once in a blue moons, right? Only three million people share content on a regular basis every week. Think about that. That's only half a percent of the entire LinkedIn population generating nine billion impressions a year. Just let that sink in. Huge opportunity. It's like a megaphone that you have available to you if you're not using it. Craziness, craziness. All right. So um, also we're seeing this trend and it's projected to continue. Uh, it's been coming down every year since 2018. And they're seeing that it's, they're saying, um, the, uh, this is from eMarketer, uh, that they're going to kind of converge around 2023. But traditional spending versus digital spending 
is starting to converge. In other words, digital up, traditional down. Uh, traditional being things like direct mail, um, exhibits and seminars. And uh, so digital is starting to converge. And then when you think about LinkedIn, you can see the, um, the bars here and see it growing every year pretty dramatically. So um, really the a bulk of the money for B2B display ad spending is moving over to LinkedIn. So, all right, so today, this is what we're gonna get through. We're gonna talk about uh, your social selling index and uh, profiles, some profile and, and settings. We'll look at some features that are only available on the mobile app, which are kind of fun. And, uh, and hopefully will motivate you if you haven't to download the mobile app. Uh, I'll give you some tips on how to grow your network and things to pay attention to as you do that. And then lastly, we'll end with how to get more mileage, more views, more engagements on your posts. So, all right, let's just stop, jump right in. Um, Lily, if you wouldn't mind uh, putting the bit.ly in the um, chat. And we're gonna give everyone a chance to find out what is your social selling index score. And uh, as you go there, click on that and that you, you will need to be logged into LinkedIn. This is a LinkedIn uh, feature that they offer. And I wanna say that there are other tools that are more powerful. So for example, the Sales Navigator Coach, way more powerful. If you've got $100 a month that you don't know what to do with, highly recommend it. But if you are just starting out, this is a good place to start. So I'd like if you would please to share your scores in the chat. Um, just go ahead and you wanna click the box that has the red, it won't have a red. Um, it won't have a red box around it, but I'm showing you, don't click learn more. That's, they're gonna sell you on Sales Navigator, but this will give you uh, your free score. It should bring up a page that looks like this on the right. And the score I'm looking for is this big one here, 76. Wow, very good, Alexandra, 73, very good. Um, and don't be shy, don't be shy, be out there, be transparent, share with us what your score is, because actually this score, oh good, 55, 65, 57. So it looks like there's a lot of us um, that are, um, you know, pretty active because, you know, I think when I started, I was in the 40s. So, um, so don't be shy. Everybody has to start somewhere. You can, you've got the, um, what opportunity to be most improved. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about it. This score is not as important as where you rank in your industry. So for example, 76 out of 100 didn't sound, Fernando, you, we're gonna, you're gonna increase that score by the end of today, I'm sure. Um, but the 76 out of 100 was a little disappointing to me, but then someone taught me that this is what you need to look at, Trisha, you're going for most improved. The industry, and so in my industry, which is sales and marketing, I am actually in the top 1% of all people who indicate that. So uh, in terms of my network, these are people I'm connected with. And for me, fortunately, unfortunately, the people I'm connected with are more uh, active than I, than are my industry, uh, fellow industry leaders. So um, I'm only in the top 3%. So one, keep this page. I would, uh, this is your personal rank. Good question, Neha. Um, keep this page bookmarked and check it every 30 days, 60 days. These little question marks will give you tips on how you can get your score up. So for example, this one said, complete your profile. You need to be an all-star on your profile. And um, okay, it says that you're not available. It may be that you don't have enough data, data, right? You haven't set up a LinkedIn page, of course not. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so I'll encourage you to hit these question marks and learn how you can get the scores up on each one of those factors. I'm gonna quickly, quickly go over how to become an all-star. This is very important. You will need to list your industry. Um, a, an, a location doesn't have to be a street address. It can just be an area. Oh, the address uh, is in the chat. It's SSI. It's a bit.ly with SSI at the end, social selling index. 
You'll need to have a current position. There it is, Bitly, Cattell, SSI. Uh, they want you to have two past positions. Don't, you know, go back, go back. If you've only worked at one company, then talk about McDonald's. But you do need two positions. You can put a, um, a volunteer position here if you've got to find experience, uh, you know, another position for experience. So if you're an entrepreneur, you've owned your company your whole life, I understand, but go dig, <laughs> go dig and find at least another position. You also do need to have education and high school is perfectly fine. Um, you may not want to list it at the top of your profile and there's ways to, to do that, to not display education. You also need at least three skills. Uh, you can have up to 50 skills. So again, overachievers, you need to have a profile photo and at least 50 connections in order to start showing, to get your SSI up. And so that may be why we had some people saying they didn't have enough data. All right. And William is the winner with a score of two. <laughs> oh, William, you will definitely get most improved. So let's talk a little bit about our profile. And um, I'm going to give you, these are the top things now. Um, you know, usually we have a, a course that has 18 hours. Can you imagine 18 hours of LinkedIn live instruction? But I'm giving you, I'm just giving, skimming the cream off the top. So these are the profile tips I'll go through very quickly. You want to create a branded banner. That's the billboard that's at the very top of your profile page. Very important. You want to have at least five skills. The top three, and I'll show you how to pick the three that show up on your profile, you will be 27 times more likely to show up in a search. You want to add services provided and request service reviews. And I'll go through how to do that. And then last but not least, you want to add three URLs to your profile and put keywords associated with those URLs. Okay, lots of good stuff. Some new things for you too, Dan. This may be new to you. Um, all right, so this is the, this is, I call this the billboard, this purple play, big giant thing. Some people have gray blocks, um, please. Don't let that billboard on I-95 go blank. You want to get it, you want to get it populated with you're open for business, what do you do, and who cares, and why would somebody want to engage with you? So, oh, I just realized this has still got personal knowledge and coaching. So where can you create this? The easiest place is to go to canva.com. It's posted in the chat. Thank you, Lilia, keeping us up. Um, and you just go to Canva at the top and where it says search, put in the words LinkedIn banner. And that will give you the perfect size and hundreds, hundreds, maybe a thousand design templates you can choose from and then modify and make it look like you. So, um, yes, so you have to, okay, I have a train, good. All right, so. The other thing I want to mention is once you get that banner uploaded, it's going to take you three, four, or five times to get it so it looks right in all of the different iterations. All right, so the desktop is easy. Then what you want to do is go to one of your articles or something, and it, you'll see the executive summary. It'll be on the left, and look, your head jumps over to the middle. A lot of people will put good stuff here. Um, uh, Rosemary Ravenel, uh, a dear uh, friend of BizHack, she had a picture of her with her hands coming up. And then when her head bumped over here, it looked like she had antlers coming out. So you want to test it. And then this is what it looks like on mobile. So here, just want to remember, it's not good enough to have it just look good on desktop. You want to go look at some other places. All right, skills and endorsements. I absolutely recommend five or more. You want to have a minimum of three. The skills and endorsements are lower down on your profile, but I wanted to show you, this is, you click on the pencil and you'll bring up all of the skills and endorsements you have. Use these pens to pick the ones that will show on your profile page. Uh, yes, there will be a replay. This is being, is this being recorded? I don't remember hearing this is being recorded. Lillian? 
it's being recorded and we will send you a copy of the recording as well as a handout with some of the key takeaways from this. Yes, it is. Perfect. Okay, great. I don't see it. Okay. So um, when you pin three, that, those are the ones that people will see on your profile and are most likely to endorse you for. Now, let's pretend that I had a, a, a skill here that I was no longer offering. You can also trash it. Put it in the trash. If you don't want to do that, say, I'm done with whatever uh, SEO, you can trash it. So, all right. And you can change and adjust these at any time. A new feature. We, I just stumbled across this. Um, but if you are on your profile page, you can uh, click to see services offered. So this is a new page, uh, a new feature of this page, and you can add reviews. So when you click on your home page, there is a prof there's a place that says services offered right on uh, right underneath your uh, pictures. So when you scroll down and click that, you will be brought to this page. You can add up to 10 skills, and then you can invite 20, credit, 20 credits, 20 people who have engaged with you that could review the quality of your service. So I sort of think it's like Google My Business. I think that's what they're going for, but I'm not sure. And it's a little clunky. It's got some bugs to work out. But this is what I said. Here you go. You see it in purple here. You click on the box that's on your profile saying provided services, brings you up. You want to add, make sure this is what you want to see, and you want to add the 10 different uh, services you provide. And then you send out invitations, and you will then see, this is what reminds me of Google My Business, Google Reviews, right? Um, and so you can see what your ratings are based on the people that you invited. I've got six reviews now. And I got five out of five. So I'm not sure. I, I'm hoping this gets moved over to the main profile page. Uh, like I said, this is brand new. Just, just uh, I think it just launched maybe two weeks ago at the most. All right. Then uh, what I want to talk to you about is this is a really cool thing. I just learned this the other day, just like a couple of days ago. So Dan, pay attention. You need to do this. So when you're on your profile page, you click on this box here that says contact info. You have the opportunity to add three URLs, which you've done, Dan. You're good. You've got your three URLs. But what you didn't do is you didn't select. See, this is what it started out like. And Dan, this is what your says company websites. OK, all three of them. These are some ideas of the ones you can put, like your corporate website. Maybe you have a landing page. Uh, for me, I have newsletter signups, uh, a link tree, which has all my social media together, and maybe a testimonial page. These are ideas of things that you can do. Now, what I want to show you, this is the hack. I just found out for each one of these URLs, I can add up to 30 characters, 30 characters of keywords. This is how you do it. Dan, go do it right now. <laughs> you uh, open it up, you edit, you click yeah, the pen. So, sorry so much. Uh, Scott was asking what's a bit.ly link, and bit.ly is just a, a link shortener, Scott. It's just like uh, if you go to bit.ly, you'll see what we mean. You can put in a long URL, and it makes it a short URL. And I, you're going to see them all throughout my presentation because I hate long URLs. And so I almost convert everything to bit.ly's. I love bit.ly's. Me and bit.ly are friends. All right. It, it, actually, my login is my uh, um, my uh, AOL address. I've had it that long. Probably, I don't know, probably since the beginning of Bitly. I don't know. Anyway, Dan, pay attention. When you go to the website URL on the contact info, you want to do the drop down and select other. Do not select company page. Do not select personal page. And then what happens is this little box magically appears. And that's where you put in your keywords. This is going to bump you up when somebody puts in, I'm looking for a life coach. Guess what? I've just stuffed it, right? I've just um, allowed them another opportunity to connect with me. So this is, this is a, a, like a brand new hack that I just learned about. So I wanted to share it. Um, this is what I've been working on this morning, Lilia. So thanks for your patience getting the deck. All right. So in the end, now you can see looks very different than company website, 
much more uh, impactful, helps them know which one they should click on and what's going to happen when they get there. Um, and you're going to show up in search results. All right. I'm going to go very quickly through settings and privacy um, because it's really boring and I, it's kind of hard to get excited about, I, you know, I'm not like keyword stuffing. Um, but these are the three I highly, highly recommend that you use or do. And the first one is to change your share job changes visibility from yes to no. OK, um, that will that will stop if you're going to make these changes it will stop spamming your contacts right when you take on a new job it usually sends out an announcement maybe you're just editing the job title to put some keywords in it you don't want to spam them because you're going to do this with all of your uh, experience or about so number one make sure you change job visibility um, the second one is this is kind of a pet peeve of mine I really don't like this about LinkedIn but there's a portion of your profile page when somebody searches for life coaches, LinkedIn so kindly offers up all of my competitors. And right on my profile page is people also viewed, which is I just think is kind of dirty tricks. Anyway, you have a way of turning that off. All right, so I'll show you, um, show you how to do that. And then the last one is, please don't get hacked. It's so embarrassing uh, to have to send your professional contacts a, a notification that your LinkedIn account has been hacked. I mean, I can put up with it on Facebook, but please turn on two-step verification. That's my recommendation. All right, this I'm gonna recommend you come back to. Uh, this is your map of the things we talked about. Now, the way you get to this page on the right is you go up to the top of LinkedIn click on the mini me that's the little tiny picture of you do the downward arrow not the downward dog that's a yoga pose and then you scroll down to settings and privacy when you do that it's going to open this page and so i've mapped out for you where to find each one of the things i talked about so account preferences is uh where you get the people also viewed you'll see it it's it's one of the headers sign in and security is where you find two-step verification and then this one's the most important even though it's lower down start here turn off your notifications so that's where you find it and then a bonus is if you don't want somebody you don't want salespeople to download your email address you can turn that off right here all right i know i went through that quickly i don't want to go into more detail because it's really boring but it's so important i added it and kept it in all right all right, this is the exciting stuff. I love this stuff. Um, mobile apps. Uh, LinkedIn has added features on the mobile app you can't do on desktop. And so therefore, take the time, download it, and follow along. All right, we're going to talk about three of those. Uh, one is name pronunciation. Oh, I've got to go listen to David Smith. I think he did something really cool. We have to go look at his profile, Dan. Uh, he announced that yesterday. Um, you get 10 seconds, and if your name is David Smith, you can get creative. And um, so we're going to see what he did. Cover story, cover video stories. They're called cover stories, but they're videos. And I'm going to talk to you. We're actually going to go live for a few minutes and take a look at a couple of these. And then the last one I just want to mention briefly is the how you can easily and quickly make connections if you're in person. Please, God, let the day come when we can be back in person. So um, I'll just spend a few minutes on that. All right, before we go live and look at some of these, this is where you find um, the, uh, the mobile app. This is how you find the pronunciation. What you do is when you're on the mobile app, go to my profile. You click, see this little mini me? This is what the mini me looks like on your mobile app on the far right. Then it'll bring you to the profile. It'll ask you, do you want to go to your profile or settings or where do you want to go? Go to profile. And then you click on the, uh, the pencil here, this pencil, and it'll bring up a list of things you can do on mobile. And this one is audio recording. I'll show you an example of an audio recording and how you can use it. Pretty cool. The second thing we're going to see live is adding a cover story video. So what this is, the way I talk about it is, this is adding video to your profile picture. 
how cool it's like it's like you're in hogwarts and you're walking by the picture and the picture starts moving right and that's what you can do on linkedin now by and we're going to show you how to do that so you can view or edit your cover story very cool and then lastly um we won't show you this because i i don't have my phone hooked up to mirror but you see this little drone like thing <laughs> I call it a drone. Um, if you click on that on mobile, it'll bring up this page where you can either scan someone else's QR code or you can share yours. You can also save it. You can send it via message. Uh, lots of cool things. But the idea here is to make it very easy to connect in person. All right. So I'm going to escape here and I'd like to oh some people are messaging me i want to start sorry um uh, let's see i gotta move this this is my pod i love my pod they keep me they keep me informed all right um this is chris Roema. i wonder how he pronounces his name this is a great tip for you if you're going to go meet somebody that's like chris and you want to pitch him on something, it's kind of nice if you know how to pronounce his name. Oh, you know what? I may have to, sorry, I'm going to share again with my sound. Apologies. Okay. Here we go. Crawl. I think that option is also good for, for example, for Dan and yourself, even for myself, because some people may mispronounce, mispronounce our last names. And Absolutely. That's a option. Dan Gros. Yeah. And then Gretsch, Cattell versus Cattle, Bosos versus yes. Bosos, you know? Yeah. All right. Let's listen to Chris and find out how he pronounces. Not only he pronounces his name, but he puts a connection in there. So the next time you see it, you don't need to, you, next time you see his name, you won't have to play this. Chris Ream. Just think of it like Phonics, Arizona. Pretty cool, huh? So this is a great use. Um, I, I didn't load up David's, but I'm anxious now. I forgot yesterday he announced it. Um, okay, I wanna show you, uh, let's go back. There we go, there you go. So this is the Hogwarts effect, that's what I call it. Oh, comes to life. Oh, you're seeing a big gray box. Carolyn, uh, did it go away? No, it's still there. Hmm. Okay. It's, okay. Uh, it's not really disrupting us. Oh, you know, is it is it the chat? Maybe it's the chat. Uh, the chat. Did that get rid of it? Okay. It All right. So this is um, this is mine, and you can. Uh, so let me see. So you want to view? Hi. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Cheryl Cattell, and I am an author, a life coach. And I also help people with their LinkedIn profiles. So that's an example of one. I love, this one's one of my favorites. Sorry, I'm getting messaged. Uh, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. <laughs> All right, this is actually one of my favorites, um, uh, Trevor. So let me reload. So Trevor, uh, he helps people that are looking for jobs and he's, he's really on top of LinkedIn. Um, take control of your future, so. So it, it's taking a minute to load because there you go. Oh, he's eating donuts. I'm, sh I'm not sure exactly what that has to do with anything, but let's hear what he has to say. Oh, hey, thanks for checking out my profile. This wait, is wait, nice. wait, 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 don't go anywhere. Because you were nice enough to come check out my profile, I want to. So you see, you the adding the captions is highly recommended because most, the vast majority of people are going to view your profile or view video with the sound off. So I wanted to show you Trevor's because he's already added the, the, um, the subtitles and I have not yet. So I wanted you to see a really good example. Um, a couple of things, other things while I'm here, I wanted to show you, give you some ideas. This is very annoying how it opens up in every tab. Um, this is actually a client of mine in Switzerland and um, she has a problem in that she goes by Susie, so you can see here Susie Lentz, um, yet her profile and legal name is Suzanne. And then she has a lot of trouble with people who can't find her. And they say, oh, I, I searched for you on LinkedIn, I can't find you. 
So what she's done here is she's using the um, former names or maiden name to list misspellings of her name. So kind of cool. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to point out is while we're here, this I wanted to talk about, this is the billboard. This is the, um, when I mentioned to you the, uh, the billboard as you're driving, Chris updates his, uh, he changes it frequently. So if he has a webinar coming up or something he wants to promote, he'll do that here. Uh, this is a, a good example. I like, uh, I like Cindy's example as well. She has, you know, here, this is, uh, this is what I do. I help, this is how I'm going to help you. Um, the other thing I like about Cindy's profile, she uses uh, emojis. And so when you do a search and look for a career strategist or a career coach, which are some of her key words here, um, she will stand out on the list. Those emojis are going to come with her name. And so that's another cool idea. And actually, the place you can get those emojis is, is called coolsymbol.com. I know it wasn't on, I don't think it was on our list, um, uh, Lilia, but if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing that, coolsymbol.com. Oh, I see. Tosin asks, how do you add subtitles? Um, you can do that with a free video editor um, called Lumen5. You can actually record your whole video there. You can add, uh, you know, effects. You can add outtakes. You can add, there's a, some pictures. Uh, so Lumen5 is a great resource for videos. Okay. Um, I think that I covered most of the live things. I wanted to come back to the um, presentation and just verify that you are seeing the presentation. Zoom, loading, loading, growing your network. Yes, we're seeing the presentation. All right, great. Okay, so here's tips, my suggestions, how to grow your network. You want to always, 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 don't make any exceptions to this. Personalize your invitations. I also recommend you be very selective who you invite. Um, don't just randomly invite people. Make sure there's a connection, that there's something you can talk about and personalize the invitation. Um, so, for example, um, BizHack, all of the alumni, uh, we have something called Follow Palooza. And so you just send an invite and say, hey, I'm a BizHack alum, and so are you. I'd love to connect. And you'll get a very high percentage of people uh, responding yes, and you'll stay out of jail. Um, you can join groups and then go into the group and start connecting with members um, and mention the fact that you're in the same group and therefore you probably have some things in common. Uh, you can upload your contact list, but please only connect, when you do that, only connect with people on your contact list that have a profile picture, right? Oh, bye, Scott. It was good to see you. I miss you. Um, the, next, the last thing on that list I want to mention is you need to manage your requests. You got to keep your house in order. You got to maintain your list. So, for example, you probably want to, um, they just went from unlimited to 100 connection requests per week. I saw somebody post that they were limited to 50. So, I don't know if they're, they were um, in trouble, they were in timeout. But um, I've, most of the things I see are 100. You only, they recommend that you start cleaning up your outstanding invitations so that you have no more than 1,500. The way you do that, this is again the navigation bar at the top of LinkedIn. You go to My Network. And this is where you see invitations, people inviting you to connect with them, events. You click on the word Manage. You'll be brought to a page that says received, and then you want to go over to sent. And this will show you all the outstanding uh, invitations for people and events. And unfortunately, there's no quick way to do it. You have to go through and withdraw each one. I recommend you start at the bottom of the list, right? This one was 14 hours ago. I usually start like a month ago, and I'll start cleaning it up month two months, but I try to keep it uh, up to date. Now, it's going to say, are you sure you won't be able to reconnect with Rachel for three more weeks? Well, you know, honestly, if she hasn't responded in two months, 
um, chances are she's not going to. So you can see here, each one of these has a nice, uh, we, bo we both know a lot of people. Uh, I just pre-purchased your new book. I was glad I was able, this was somebody I worked with at Blue Green. So please make sure you put um, a personalized uh, message. The other thing is I, I just wanna make sure you do is to stay out of LinkedIn jail. LinkedIn jail is when they stop allowing you to connect with people. Um, they may even ban your account. And this is one, uh, if we put this one in, in chat as well, Lilia, I think I, you have it. Um, this is a list of 80 plus banned automation tools. And if you're caught using them, you literally could be um, uh, banned from using LinkedIn. They could uh, delete your account. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Last thing we're going to cover uh, is how to get, so you spent all of this time. You've written this, this, you know, manifesto. It's beautiful. It's you, you know, it's like war and peace, and you want to make sure that the, more than your family and friends, uh, five of them, uh, see it, right? I, oh, come on, you know, you, you've, you've really done a, a good job. So what I want to give you are some tips about the al algorithm, and I'm going to say it with a caveat um, that the things change. Things are changing. So I'm going to share with you my personal results. And then I'm going to say, and the, yours are subject to LinkedIn's algorithm changing. So just caveat there, things are always changing. So on the left is what we call a lazy post. That's where you put in a little bit of a, a blurb. You put in some hashtags, and then you put a link to a blog article or a YouTube video or something. So what's happening is this is so easy because it pulls in the image. It pulls in the little uh, blurb. And it pulls in, you know, the URL here. Now, when I was doing this, uh, we did this every week, and I would get usually around 100 views of that in my feed. So somebody told me, if I don't, if I'm not lazy, and I put a text image, so I took this image from the blog post, and then um, I, I used a screenshot, and then I add my text here, my own text, and you can, it, it, there's more than this, but it's just whatever I might say. Then at the bottom of this, I, I should have expanded it, but I add three at signs. So at Dan Gretsch, for example, and I put people that I know are going to like, comment, and share my posts. Or I could put somebody whose attention I'm trying to get. Maybe I'd like to recognize Lilia for being the outstanding support person that makes our lives easier. I would put at Lilia Pozos. So the other thing you want to add is three hashtags. Again, I put them at the bottom of my uh, words because this is really about getting in the right news feeds and showing up in the right searches. Then the last thing you want to do is get five comments in 60 minutes. No problem right? Look what happened. Same post, same day of the week. It, it, uh, amazing, a tenfold increase. So I went from 110 to 1,170. Wow. Right. So, right, is this is all easy stuff you can do, you know, especially if you're in the office, you post it and you run around the office and say, go, make, you know, go make a comment on my blog post or on my LinkedIn post. Oh, wait, we're working remotely. Hmm, not so easy, right? All right. We're going to talk about pods. And so, Lilia, if you wouldn't mind putting this up in the, uh, up in the uh, uh, poll, then uh, what I'm going to do is talk to you a little bit about pods. Um, pods, uh, the, this is uh, something that is called LinkedIn. Uh, the, uh, LinkedIn pods is uh, something that's kind of grown in the past few years, and there is some debate about it. So I'm gonna go through the pros and cons. And I also want to tell you that I sent all of the discussion about pods to LinkedIn and asked them if what we were doing was okay, and they said yes, and I've saved it. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, in the poll, we got 58%, oh good, 60%. Let's share the poll. All right, so we've got, 
So five of you um, have either heard of them or hopefully are participating in them. Um, but for the most of us, uh, you know, 80%, 86% don't. So this may be new for you. Um, and uh, this might be one of the golden nuggets you leave with. I hope so. I hope so. All right. So let's talk about pods. So pods are started. There's all different reasons why you would form a pod. All it is, is it's a group of people who agree to get together and share best practices, help each other, right? It sounds pretty much like what LinkedIn's about, <laughs> right? So most people agree to help each other out on posts, just like the company pages on LinkedIn, people within a company agree to promote the company posts. In this case, it's usually small companies or individual entrepreneurs who then group together and pull their, um, you know, pool their resource to do the same thing that big corporations with thousands of employees can do, right? So ideally you wanna have 20 to 30. I'm gonna show you a case study that the pod only had eight members. Um, the pod I manage has 50, that's the max. It's, so I've got a waiting list right now for the pod that I manage. It is all about giving and then you receive. So if you don't reciprocate and don't help your friend, your friends, they won't help you and you'll get kicked out. Um, to create a pod, if Lily, if you would put these instructions, this is more bitlies, love bitlies, um, into the into the uh, oh, you already did. My gosh, she's so ahead of me. All right, that is a link to an article that gives you step by step by step instructions on what you need to do. But basically, you go to that little message place on the bottom right, open it up, start writing a message, name the pod and or, or name the group and add members. And 50 is the max. Also, I recommend you be really clear about what your rules are for engagement. So for example, ours, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., we all get together and help each other out. And if you can't, okay, life happens, but you can't use that as an excuse week after week after week. So um, that's why I have a waiting list because if somebody starts dropping off and doesn't participate, bye-bye. All right. Here's the case study BizHack did. Um, they, these metrics are averages for each post. They were posting twice a week and they only had eight pod members. So you can have a pretty big inf impact. So they had 944 views in average. So it was a 308% increase compared to the non-pod posts during the same period. They had 17 reactions. Um, so those might be thumbs up, celebrate, whatever. Um, though that was a 466% increase. And then 14 comments, which was a 600% increase. The most important thing here is LinkedIn is looking for content that gets people engaged. This is what you're doing is showing engagement. The other thing LinkedIn likes to do is they like to see you staying in LinkedIn. And so you don't put your link in the post, you put it in the comments below. So there's all the tips that I have for you about um, pods and getting more mileage and uh, just, just the cream off of the top. So next steps, went a little further. We have some freebies for you and you can get those at the, at the URL in the chat, soon to be in chat. Um, so bizhack.com, L-B-E stands for LinkedIn Business Edge. Uh, I have some profile tips, which goes through a lot of the things we talked about today and also posting tips. So wanted to, there it is, free gifts right in the chat. And I wanna challenge you, go out and record a cover video. I mean, it's so much fun. I really recommend it. You'll have fun with it and the people who stop by your profile are more than likely gonna stay for a while and read. So with that said, um, We'd love for you to add. Now you know what and why. And we'd love to help you and show you how to do this step by step. And that brings us to the LinkedIn Business Edge. We have a new class starting November 2nd.
So if you like what you heard, you want more, you're hungry, and you want to make put this into action, please join us on November 2nd. We'd love to have you. So Dan, uh, did you want to jump in or I can stop sharing or you want me yeah, to you keep can stop sharing? I, I wanted to first uh, thank you for the phenomenal uh, content. I hope you guys found that useful and I want you to all show your love and appreciation uh, for Cheryl in our chat. Uh, I also wanted to welcome uh, Danilo Vargas uh, from the Office of the Mayor, Daniela Labine Caba, and the um, really the the, the force uh, behind the Strive 305 effort. Um, we're very honored uh, to be one of the founding partners of this effort, and I wanted to give you the floor uh, to share a message from the mayor and also to talk a little bit about what Strive 305 is all about. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, it's great to be with you, you all. Thank you so much. On behalf of Mayor Daniela Levine Cava, I can tell you that it's an honor to be partnering with Dan Gretsch. And Cheryl just gave out some amazing information uh, with BizHack Live, an innovative program to help small business owners level up. The mayor has been clear that she definitely wants all our small business owners in Miami-Dade County to have the opportunity to get to the next level in their business. We hear a lot of talk and we start during COVID that you know funding for your business and access to capital is very important. But one of the best sources of capital for any business comes from the revenue that you generate from attracting customers. And so marketing is super important. I'm a marketing guy. I've been a marketing guy for 15 plus years. And I know that that's a, a big and broad subject matter. And to have experts like Dan and Cheryl break it down in an actionable way with homework and these beautiful sheets that they're gonna send us so that we can go and actually start taking steps to uh, level up our, our LinkedIn profile, I think is just tremendous. I'm honored, the mayor's honored to be working with BizHack and with the amazing team there. And Strike 305 really is about that. Um, there's four main pillars that I wanna tell you about. The first one is that we need to connect everyone who's a business owner in Miami-Dade County to all the resources like BizHack and other partners with whom we are going to be working with to provide this type of information. The other thing is that we need to have online learning and leveraging virtual communities to spread this information, kind of like the pods, right? Help each other out, create that sense of community and spread this knowledge about how to level up in our businesses. The third thing is that we need affordable working spaces and offices where we can actually do some of this work for especially for micro businesses who may not be able to afford these high rents that you find in Miami-Dade County oftentimes. So we're working on a, on a network, leveraging libraries and other resources and other incubators where you can go physically to meet other great entrepreneurs like yourself and do some of this great work. And then last piece is build this sense of community around you know, boot camps where we are gonna be providing technical assistance and hopefully partnering with great people like Dan to kind of walk you down the path of, of really mastering LinkedIn or your business plan your website, all these great things that you need to know in order to really be successful in your business. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first session. I'm going to be participating in all the sessions. I'm taking notes, Dan, and I'm you know paying attention. I'm going to be looking at my LinkedIn profile after this. Cheryl, great content. Thank you so much. Oh, we can't hear you, Dan. Your excitement is contagious, Danilo. Thank you so much. Um, tell us where you are right now or where you were this morning. I know you have a big event today, and I really appreciate you stepping away to give us a little bit of your time. Yeah, so today we were having an, a, there's a conference called um, Finance Local. It's by Urban Impact Labs and Access Helps, and uh, they do amazing work as well. And it's something we featured in the morning huddle as well. And so the mayor was there giving us some remarks. It's going on till four o'clock. Um, if you're interested, you can still participate. It's at finance Miami. I'm sorry, finance local dot Miami. And you can sign up there if you want to be a part of that community. There's going to be another set uh, session in October uh, 28th, I believe. And that's going to be impactful as well. So help us design this, uh, how we should be helping small business owners in the county. Enter that conversation. You're a part of it. So thanks, Dan, for the time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And I just wanted to share with you guys some of the thank you gifts that we're going to be supplying to you. Um, you'll get a handout uh, with key takeaways, including all those links that were coming out in the chat. We'll make sure to get you those as well. 
Uh, this will be via email, uh, through the email that you gave us when you registered. You'll also get a link to this recording uh, so that if you had to miss a piece of it or if you want to review it again or share it with a friend, um, eventually it'll get, be up on our YouTube page as well for the community to use. Um, I see your hand, Aria. I'll get to you in one sec. Um, we're also going to automatically register you for the digital marketing audit and Instagram sessions that are coming up. Uh, so mark your calendars. Next two Wednesdays uh, at 1230 will be your digital marketing audit and your Instagram uh, with our other amazing masterclass instructors. We're also going to send you guys information about our scholarship program for minority and women-owned businesses. And um, we're going to include in the email we send to you as well as in the chat right now, uh, a scholarship application link. And one of the things that happens is when you do apply, uh, we've committed to the mayor that we're going to give everyone a free marketing consultation with me uh, as a thank you. We'll also invite you to attend one of our upcoming classes so you can check it out in person. That has a $500 value. Um, so what are you applying for? Uh, a scholarship will help defray the cost, uh, part, part of the cost of either our seven week digital marketers edge program. This is our core offering. This is what we've been doing for seven years uh, with more than 700 businesses. It's a really intense boot camp style, 35 hour, seven week program with 10 hours of personalized coaching starts October 25th. Cheryl is the lead instructor and creator of the LinkedIn business edge. She mentioned that a little about uh, at the end. It's uh, five weeks, 17 hours, seven hours of personalized coaching, and that starts November 2nd. And then for those of you who are a little shorter on time or need something a little bit lower in cost, we do one-on-one -on -one consulting with our amazing masterclass and, and, and certified instructors, and that can start anytime. And the scholarship uh, can help defray uh, any of those uh, that is a fit for you. Um, I want to take a second and just say um, COVID is not over. And one of the lessons that COVID has taught us is the essential need for digital marketing for small businesses. Because when we're all stuck inside our houses, you know, obsessively checking our phones, the way to communicate with people is no longer simply billboards and signage and uh, flyers and, and events and networking and going to chamber meetings, it's just not enough anymore. It not, not, not that it was enough before COVID, but definitely with COVID, it's not enough. And what we are here to do guys is to help give you a simpler path for marketing your business online. One that's really founded in your business story, the essence of who you are and why you do what you do. And we do it with the utmost of integrity. Uh, and it's incredibly important that you find a partner uh, like us, one that cares about you and your business, that sits side by side with you to help you navigate the wiles of digital marketing. And whether it's us uh, or many of the free resources that Danilo can put you in touch with, don't ignore digital marketing. It, you will not be able to maintain and grow your business without it. And so we're here to help. We have the three master classes, uh, two more weeks coming up. Uh, and uh, I know that the Strive 305 is all about resource sharing and community building. Uh, and it is an honor, a true honor to be a part of Daniela Levine Cava's effort. Um, she's a, a dear friend, uh, her, her wife, my wife, excuse me, uh, it, it runs Catalyst Miami, the organization that Daniela founded. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the work that Catalyst Miami is doing, uh, continuing the legacy that Daniela is now leading. I also just wanna say one other thing I'm a Surfside resident. Uh, the Champlain Towers are five blocks from where I live. And oh my God, the work that Daniela did to support my, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. It was devastating for all of us. And thank you, Daniela, for being this town's mayor, Surfside's mayor, and not just Miami-Dade's mayor, uh, for the work that you and your team did. And Danilo, from the bottom of my heart as a resident of the county, uh, it's heartbreaking what happened and having a public official like her leading the research and recovery uh, and mourning uh, was profoundly important to me as a human being. And I just wanted to acknowledge that publicly. Let's end with that. We'll see you in a week.
We love you guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Lilia. Thank you, Danilo, for the trust that you put in us to be one of your founding partners. And we'll see you next week at 1230 to talk about your digital audit. See you next Wednesday.